Good day, I'm Fritz Jacklich, and this is my presentation on space carving. Uh, when I was looking for a topic, I really wanted to find a way to recreate 3D objects on my computer. Um, while there are several options available, um, I found an interesting method called space carving. And uh, in my example, we are going to take a simple bag of coffee here, 8 o'clock coffee, and we are going to recreate this on my computer. So let's take a look. Alright, now let's get into my presentation. This is the exploration of space carving techniques and applications. Here's a quick overview for you. I'll introduce what exactly is space carving. We'll talk about silhouette space carving with a turntable, which is a technique that I looked into. We'll talk about the project description, provide some demos, uh, and all evaluation of the demo. Um, some alternative techniques available, future application techniques that um, could come about. Um, and we'll finish it up with conclusions and some references. So what is space carving? The way I look at it, it's an inexpensive way to recreate 3D objects from 2D images. To put it simply, all you need is a camera, some way to calibrate it, um, and a turntable, and any sort of object. And you've got an easy way to recreate 3D objects from some several images. So what we do is we carve away voxels to form shape. What is a voxel? It's a combination of volume and pixel. So it's a, a block, a rectangular prism in space that you define um, and it gives depth to any particular prism. Kalakos and Seitz were, the, were some people to develop a practical method in their research and their research was based on uh, W. Neem and R. Buschmann from Hamburg, Germany. So current applications that we can see today, um, you see them a lot in the entertainment industry. They involve movies, sporting events, video games, and I have seen some virtual art museums that have popped up uh, online as well. So here are some examples here. The first image is a very popular movie called The Matrix, and this is a scene where Neo, the hero, um, is trying to dodge bullets and they go into slow motion and the camera seems to pan around him and the way that they fill in the spaces between the cameras is using some software they've taken the picture of him and they built a 3d representation of him that they can move around at any particular time and all these cameras are able to capture all that data all at once and then the movie makers are able to work with that data to get a different angle if they so choose in the lower left hand corner i've got a picture of uh, a video game spider-man and uh, think about how there's, with more and more memory in video games, more and more users want to be able to actually wall crawl and flip and explore the city of Manhattan in detail. So as if you were to go back and you were to walk the streets, it would be almost an exact representation. In the lower right-hand corner is an example of the virtual tours where, where Carlos Hernandez, from his website, he's provided a picture of a priceless work of art that he has recreated using space carving method. As you can see, each black point is a camera as it overlays an image that he's taken to resulting in a 3D image. So let's talk about some silhouette space carving. Um, this was first developed, this was a method using a turntable was developed by Fitzgibbon, Gross, and Zisserman. Um, and I used their examples, they looked a lot with, into using a, a dinosaur on a turntable and I decided to, to adapt that using my own bag of coffee. The silhouette of the target object is created and carved away into a voxel array made by those voxels I talked about earlier at known angles. The more angles, the better the result. So they used 36 images and I said, hey, I've got a turntable, why don't we use the same thing? I'm trying to get the best detail possible. So first you got to calibrate your camera and you must find the intrinsic and extrinsic properties for calibration. Together they make the projection matrix or known as the P matrix in this case. So the intrinsic matrix is based on your data within your camera, intrinsic. Um, and it's made up of the K matrix, which is a 3 by 3 matrix that takes advantage of your focal length, Fx and F, F, Fy, excuse me your principal point offset, which is your x0 and y0, and your axis skew. And there's a lot of software available, and I use some to find this that I'll show in a demo here shortly. The extrinsic camera is outside of the camera, and it's really a 3 by 4 matrix made up of the rotation matrix R and the translation vector T, such that you get this 3 by 4 matrix down here at the bottom. 
So the projection matrix is divine, uh, defined as a 3 by 4 matrix where you take the intrinsic and multiply it by the extrinsic. So that 3 by 4 matrix is used in conjunction with your input images to make your 3D object. Um, an easy calibration technique that I used uh, involved from Carlos Hernandez this, uh, this pattern here and I'm going to get to in more detail with this demo. For my setup, as you can see in the lower left or the left hand side is my turntable with a blue screen in the background and some objects I was testing out and I was using a checkerboard at the time to try to get it to work. I decided to go with a different input um, set of a different calibration pattern. And then my input images in this case are going to be the bag of coffee. So let's take a look. So now for this portion of the test, I needed to get uh, calibration for my camera. So what I did is I scoured online to find a useful um, source code. Uh, and here we have from carloshernandez.org. Um, if you dial in here, you've got the calibration code. And what they have is a, a unique pattern up here in the upper left corner that you can print out and you can use, if you place an object, it will detect the dots through the object. Um, but since I was using a blue screen background, I decided that I was just going to take my first 36 shots um, with the pattern on the turntable by itself. And then I was going to take my 36 shots of my individual model without having to worry about, you know, am I going to detect the dot pattern, you know, when I'm trying to just detect the model. So just go into here, um, into MATLAB, and we're going to dial in to where I have it saved. So I have it under MATLAB, my directory here. We've got to get it up there, and we're just going to do a couple lines of code here. Uh, we're going to add path, my directory, slash the, uh, the pattern calibration, which is their code that I downloaded. And then I'm going to add path again under my directory, the toolbox, calibration toolbox that I also downloaded. Which is another toolbox which uh, this program takes advantage of and it reduces the number of clicks that the user needs to go through. And then I'm going to define my variable as the calibrations. It's equal to function here, calib seq, uh, and then I'm going to define my images here that it's going to be looking at. So I've got images, 36 images of a bag of coffee on the left there, so we're just going to name it coffee, uh, asterisk, dot jpg, and we're going to let this go. So as you can see, it brings up my 36 images on my turntable as it spins around. It's automatically detecting where those dots are since that pattern is a unique pattern. And what this is going to do is it's going to spit out um, <coughs> a couple of different matrices, but the one I'm most interested in is the calibration, or I'm sorry, the projection matrix that the uh, dinosaur.mat uses. All right. So you see from the program, it's got the focal length, the principal point, skew, distortions, and pixel error all laid out there. It's building the calibrations file right now, structure array. It's almost there. There we go. And from right here, you can see, if you compare the two images, our dots are lined up as those little X's. Well, what are these little green dots with the purple lines connecting them are actually the camera angles. So imagine, in this point of view, it's as if the pattern does not move and the camera does, but we know that that's not quite the case. It's actually our camera that stays still and the pattern that moves is just we're able to not move it on the tripod. Turn around. From there, you get a one-by-one one structure array called calibrations as we defined. 
If you open that up, it's got a couple different files. The K file, Q, T, R, and P is what we're most interested in, which is a 1 by 36 cell. And if you open that up, you got 3 by 4 double arrays, in matrices inside, excuse me. If you load that up, there's our projection matrix.